This is video three for trig proof and solving trig equations, section 1.3, lesson three. All right, so this is one all about the threes, it seems. Okay, so the first task here is, this is number 55 in the textbook, read the directions. They're basically stating solve the equation for all the solutions possible. That's gonna be very different from solving them with just solutions between zero and two pi. So bottom line is, when you see something like this, especially since we just did those trick proofs, it's going to be very, very, very tempting to say, hey, I saw cosine of 2 theta. It had three different options to change into. Should we go to the cosine squared minus sine squared? Should we go to the 2 cosine squared minus 1? Should we go to the 1 minus 2 sine squared? Don't go to any of them. Here's why. There's not really any complex structure that needs to be broken down here. Because as long as you can compare a single cosine value to a constant on the, to a constant on the other side, uh, we don't need to do any of that extra business. So let's just get this root 3. And this 2 on the other side for comparison. This is the point where we ask ourselves, what points on the unit circle <clears throat> equal root 3 over 2 for the cosine value? Now, cosine is the x-coordinate. Cosine equals a positive number here and a positive number there. It's basically where the x value is positive. So this would be at root 3 over 2 comma 1 half and negative no, positive root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So ask yourself, what radian value creates this reference angle? And the answer is, it's a 30 degree angle, which is the same as pi over 6. Here, it's just going to be 11 pi over 6. So where does 2 theta, or I'm sorry, where does cosine equal root 3 over 2? It's the place where the angle itself is equal to pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now here's, here's the thing, though. This is more complex than its surface value. Do you see that 2 theta there? That 2 theta means that there are double the number of theta solutions in between 0 and 2 pi than there normally would be. The 2 theta is cramming in twice as many places where the cosine of 2 theta is equal to root 3 over 2. So here's what you got to do. You got to say, looking into the future, an equivalent value of pi over 6 One more revolution would give me 13 pi over 6. Now I know what you're thinking. It's not in between 0 and 2 pi. Hold on. So 13 pi over 6 is going to be another solution as it's compared to pi over 6. And if you do the same thing with 11 pi over 6, Adding 2 pi to it, 23 pi over 6 would be the other, uh, the, the second solution that, that gets doubled with the 2 theta. By the way, I'm just adding 12 pi over 6 to get from, to get from here to here. All right, here's why we can do that. You're solving for theta. When you, when you solve an equation, you're solving for the variable. So you're dividing this side of the equation by 2, and you're dividing that by 2, that by 2, that by 2, and that by 2. So what happens when you divide pi over 6 by 2, and 11 pi over 6 by 2, 
and, 20, and 13 pi over 6 by 2, and 23 pi over 6 by 2. Well, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 2, which means they're all 12s on the bottom now. Okay, that actually is a pretty solid foundation for being between 0 and 2 pi. Because think about what 0 and 2 pi actually represent. 2 pi is a fraction over 12 is 24 pi over 12. So we're good. Everybody's between 0 and 25. Everybody's between 0 and 24 pi over 12. So normally, if the directions were solve for just the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, you got them. It's those four. What does it mean for all solutions? Well, there is an infinite number of times you can rotate around this unit circle to talk about solutions that would be equivalent to pi over 6 and 13 pi over 6 and 25 pi over 6 and 37 pi over 36 and 49 pi over, over, over 6 and, and so on and so forth. There's an infinite number of solutions. So we got to ask ourselves, how can we take into account the fact that pi over 12 is not the only one of its kind? Well, we could, we could add 2 pi n, we could add 2 pi n, we could add 2 pi n, and we can add 2 pi n. But here's the thing. Technically, those 2 pi n's should be cut in half just like their radian values should have been beforehand. So you divide that by 2, divide that by 2, divide that by 2, divide that by 2. Which means they should all be pi over n's. I'm sorry, pi n's, not pi over n. Furthermore, okay, so this would normally be your solution, right? Think about this. What is 1 pi over 12 plus pi? It's 13 pi over 12. So this is sort of like an unnecessary thing to state because you've got 1 pi over 12 plus pi, which yields that solution right there. And it will also yield every single other solution because these n's are, uh, they basically represent all the integers, all the whole positive and negative numbers that exist. So when I add pi to this one, that one is now unnecessary to write. When I have this one and I add, again, 12 pi over 12 to it, I get 23 pi over 12. I don't need that second set. It's all described right here. All right. So that was a very weighty explanation. I would expect you guys maybe to have a few questions about that, but we talked about it last year, so maybe that was enough to set us straight. Let's talk about 57. 57 is asking just for the solutions between 0 to 2 pi. It kind of looks like we can, we can move the sign of u, yeah, for sure. We can, u, we can move the sign of u to the left-hand side and the 1 to the left-hand side. And hopefully you guys spotted that and said, that stuff has quadratic structure. I can do a substitution. It won't be a problem. I can solve it like a quadratic. Sine squared, sine, and constant. So what I'm going to do is say, let w equal sine of u. 
And then everywhere I see a sign of u, I'm going to replace it with w's. So 2w squared plus w minus 1 equals 0. We got a factorable polynomial now, which uh, in this case, I'm just going to do the guess and check version instead of splitting up the middle. The guess and check version states, hey, the first one has to be 2w times w to get w squared. To get 2w squared, I need 2w times w. To get negative 1, I need 1 times 1. 1 needs to be positive, 1 needs to be negative. 2w times 1 is 2w. Minus 1w is positive w in the middle. So I would encourage you guys to explore those kind of shortcuts so that you're not constantly um, doing the AC method and possibly taking way more time than you need to. You set these two equal to zero now. Now it's turning into very simple algebra. Add one to both sides, divide by two, you get w is equal to a half. Subtract one from both sides, you get w is equal to negative one. At this point, you can replace the w back with sine of u. So the w is helpful to restructure this, but ultimately we have to sign for, or we have to solve for the, uh, the variable given at the very beginning. So you got to ask yourself, where does sine of u equal a half on the unit circle? Well, sine is positive in these two locations. Sine is the opposite over adjacent or opposite over hypotenuse, which means it's the y value. It's pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And those are the only two solutions between 0 and 2 pi that give you positive sine. So u equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. I'm sorry if you couldn't see those. That work done. Sine equals negative 1 down here, which is 3 pi over 2. All right, so u equals 5 pi over 6, pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. I got two more examples, uh, so I'll just start a new video with that one. And I got to be careful because I tripped over the cord here and I almost made this thing topple to the ground. So 